Good evening, everybody. Tom Meadow at Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. So, we talked about this a lot yesterday, but things, of course, have ramped up since we last spoke, and it's been a while since we've seen one of these, and also seen one of these. We have an enhanced risk that is tornado driven, which a, with a hatched risk to go along with it. The last time we saw this was Hurricane Milton, actually, but we haven't had a planes event in a very long time in particular here. So looks like a busy day is ahead tomorrow for a lot of us here. We will, of course, be going live, but I'm going to kind of break down area to area what could be expected at this current point in time. We'll make a follow up video in the morning before we end up going live tomorrow. Uh, of course, things are pending still with that. But in any case, though, our hatch risk stretches through east central parts of Kansas, and the 10% even goes further out to the east beyond that point. Interesting thing to note with this event, I do think that we'll have a mixture of storm modes here. I do think that supercells are possible up here, but I think we're going to see much more in the way of line segments and eventually a linear mode begin to take over as we get later into the evening with this. And then we're still kind of curious in particular about this area over towards Oklahoma and Texas right now. I do think that there is a conditional severe weather and tornado threat with this as well. I do think that after a while, this area too will go linear here. And then also, depending on how instability looks over towards Iowa, that could also be a point of interest as well. The further east we go, the threat, of course, will drop off. But the main thing factors for this enhanced risk of course are tornado and wind driven hail threat is relatively palpable but i wouldn't expect anything magnanimous out of that but with that being said here let's go ahead and take a look at the models because originally when i talked about this yesterday when i was doing the stream i wasn't really expecting it to be upgraded to an enhanced risk well, since then, we've had uh, some pretty impressive evolution with this thing. If you look towards the bottom left corner here, you can actually take a look at the surface winds, and also you can take a look at what the low pressure is looking like. It's a pretty strong uh, inland cyclone low here with a pressure of 1,004 millibars here. But also the thing that you can note here is that there is a very distinct look of a front that we're getting here to go along with it. You'll see that on the screen here with a blue line that I'm putting down now. But if we switch back over to the 500 millibar screen here. You can also see that we have a pretty well amped trough here to go along with that. So we have multiple points of lift. And this is why this is, there's such a large area for potential severe weather right now. So we get later into the evening, you can see that we have a very amped up short wave that pops up around parts of Kansas, also around parts of Iowa. And then later in the evening, this is where Oklahoma starts to come into play. So there is a nocturnal severe threat. Like I said, the storm mode and other factors coming into play are still up in the air. And that's why I think this is still pretty conditional as to what we could see here. But I do think severe weather chances are up in this area as well. By the time we get later into the evening though, we start eventually losing stability. So I don't expect this to be a long duration event for Oklahoma. It's really Kansas that's, of course, the point of interest, not just because of the enhanced risk, but the environmental factors over there to go along with it. So let's go ahead and switch over now to the mid-level jet. And this is where things start to get a little bit more spicy. You have a very strong mid-level jet, and this is where we can really get a good look at those short waves right here. You can see this one pretty well pronounced as we're heading over towards these central parts of Kansas here. Eventually, like I said before, we see, we'll see that begin to occur over towards Oklahoma. But it's a little bit later in the evening. I, I really think timing could be an issue for storms that develop over there. But I do think that we'll still have enough instability to overcome. And it may actually work in the favor of those storms more as well. I was talking about with some of you, I was talking about that with some of you yesterday. We we're having our little um, discussion but you can also see that we still have storms even all the way over towards iowa and parts of illinois here so while the while we only have an, a marginal risk here two percent for tornado threat and five percent for wind and hail still could get some some nasty weather also i think flooding is going to be an issue with this storm as well there's a lot of uh moisture available for this storm system to work with here so i do think that that's also another factor that's going to be coming into play here as well as we go forward here so big thing with the tornado threat that we always look at here is the low level jet 
and I've noticed in particular, and this is what's kind of captured my eye the most, especially over towards Oklahoma here, depending on the type of storm mode we get, if we get decent convection, no crap vection here, I think that we could get some pretty gnarly uh, supercells here and maybe a couple of tornadoes. That low level jet's at 50 knots, so it's a very impressive environment over here. Same can be said over towards Kansas. And this low level jet is going to ramp up after the sun sets here. So dangerous nocturnal tornado threat could be coming into play here. I would not be surprised if that if conditions ramp up over here towards maybe the Oklahoma Kansas line that that enhanced risk with the hatched risk maybe even stretches further to the south here. As we go further to the east, the environment's not quite as favorable as of right now, but I would still be paying attention past Kansas City and maybe even towards central parts of Missouri as well. We'll just have to see how these storms progress throughout the evening here. Of course, as we get later into the evening, as I said before, we're going to start to lose some of that instability that we would need to keep these storms going, so the storm threat will eventually start to diminish. So looking at the environment as a whole here as well, and this is from the thermodynamic standpoint here, we have a very good moisture return as I mentioned earlier. By the time we're in the early morning hours tomorrow, we already have our dew points well within the 60s. It gets kind of soupy over here towards Kansas and parts of Oklahoma here. We're in the uh, mid 60s towards central and eastern parts of Oklahoma by the time we get towards, I would say 1 p.m. And we actually even get some areas that sneak all the way up towards the 70s at times just before storm initiation occurs over here. So depending on uh, how this pans out here, like I said, the environment over towards Oklahoma looks just as primed, if not even more primed than I would say parts of Kansas here. Like I said, we get very adequate moisture returns here as well to go along with it, as well as Iowa too. So I'm still, like I said, I'm still, I'm still not, the jury's still not out on this. That's I, that's really where I'm trying to get at with Iowa over here. But this entire area, I would say, especially over towards southern Iowa, I would say, I'm still kind of leery as to what happens with this area over here. I have decent confidence in this area here. We already know that the enhanced risk was issued for a reason, along with the hatch tour risk, but. I'm still curious about this spot here, but in any case, though, as we continue to go forward with this, that moisture, of course, is going to be lingering into the evening here. Another factor that comes into play here is this very strong gradient that we have here between our moist sector and the dry sector that's going to be behind the cold front that we mentioned earlier. This is also going to be an additional point of lift. So I do, like I said, this is the main reason why I have decent confidence in this uh, Oklahoma setup here. Is it a shoe in? No. Of course, there's always fail parameters with any setup here, but this does still reinforce some of the confidence that I've had. I've been looking at this in particular since Sunday. So the fact that we're still seeing good consistency leads me to think that there's a pretty good shot of this occurring. Obviously, we're hoping for the best here, not the worst case scenario, though. But in any case, you combine that along with our warm sector here and what you'll notice is temperatures are getting into the 80s over here towards uh oklahoma city here i was about to call it new york and then also over towards kansas here we're getting into the mid to upper 70s here warm sector is pretty abundant right along that frontal boundary though in particular look at the gradient there as well we're seeing 60 degree temperatures up against 82 degree temperatures being with the only separation being that cold front so like i said very unstable environment prime for severe weather here this almost has the look of one of those classic fall early winter type setups here we were anticipating that the weather pattern was going to pick up at some point so wasn't necessarily surprised to see this but this one looks a little bit more intense than some of the previous ones i've seen but in any case though Let's go ahead and take a look at some environmental factors that are pretty important to severe weather. Of course, main one is instability here. We're talking about cape. This is our mixed layer cape here. To the bottom left corner, we have surface cape here. Across the board here, whether it's mixed layer or surface cape, we're getting close, if not exceeding that 2,000 joules per kilogram threshold. And really, it only takes about 750 to 1,000 to get some strong to severe storms here. 
with the wind profile already being as proficient as it is, that definitely leads to some concerns here for both of these regions. And like I said, the instability holds up pretty well over here towards Oklahoma. And actually, this is the first time I've really gotten a look at the most recent model here available to me that shows this range. And this instability even lasts into the overnight hour. So concern starting to increase here for that nocturnal tornado threat here. Over here towards Kansas, I think that we might be able to extend the range maybe up to about, I would say, 7, 8, maybe even 9 o'clock central. But Oklahoma here, we could even go past midnight depending on how conditions persist here. So a little bit of concern there. I really think that uh, convection is going to come into play with this in particular here. Still very much conditional. But whether you're looking at surface base cape or mixed layer cape here, pretty easy to tell that we have a pretty unstable environment when it comes to severe weather here. So last thing we'll do is go ahead and look at the timing here. We'll go ahead and get a look at what our reflectivity will look like. Storm initiation looks like it hasn't changed much since we last look at it, looked at it, thinking about four o'clock central when we start to get some formation here. I'm on the watch for supercells in this area by the, about this time, I would say. And of course, that's gonna be persisting as we go later into the evening here. Eventually, of course, as anticipated, we get into a linear mode. Start to see a little bit of a line segment begin to occur over here towards Oklahoma right around like nine o'clock central. And then eventually we see a consolidation of a line beginning to form as we get right around midnight and going a little bit beyond that point. But in any case, this is still very much prone to changing. This, none of this is really set in stone. So I don't expect any further upgrades to a moderate risk or anything like that as of right now. But of course, keep your guard up. Oklahomans, Kansas, my uh, Kansas people, you guys are very familiar with this kind of stuff. It's a little bit out of season, but you guys know what to do here. So keep yourself safe. I'll see you in the morning. Until then, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.